Welcome to another laboratory in your physical science experience. Today, we will investigate Newton's second, second law of motion. The experiment is divided into two procedures. In procedure one, we will keep the unbalanced force constant and we will determine how the acceleration varies as the total mass is varied. In procedure two, we will keep the total mass constant and determine how the acceleration varies with the variation of the unbalanced force. In procedure one, we will keep the unbalanced force constant and we will determine how the acceleration varies as the total mass is varied. Now, in this trial, we are using a 200 gram, we're using two 200 grams um, weight. So one of them is on the floor and then the other is suspended. Now to, we're going to add a rider to make the force on balance and we're going to time how long it takes for this weight to touch the ground. So here, let us do um, some, let us do some calculations before um, we get started with the experiment. So first we need to measure the distance the mass travels. So we're going to take our meter stick and we are going to calculate the distance that the, the mass travels. Okay, so the distance traveled is 1.32 meters. So let's make a correction here. 1.32 meters. Okay. Now we are going to calculate the unbalanced force. So the experimental procedure says we are to use a rider that is, sorry, the experimental procedure says we are to use a rider that is not to be more than 6% of the total mass. So the total mass that we're using here is 200 grams plus 200 grams, and that's gonna give us 400 grams. 6% of 400 grams is 24. So the rider should be no more than 24 grams, and we're gonna be using a 20 gram rider. So here when we talk about here when we talk about the total mass, it's M1 plus M2 plus M3. M3 is the rider. So M1 and M2 are 200 grams each. And then M3 is 20 grams. So this is 420 grams. So here we have 420 grams. And when we convert 400, and 20 grams, we need to convert that to kilograms. So we need the mass in kilograms. And we know that um, 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. So we're gonna use that as a conversion factor to figure out how many kilograms we have in 420 grams. So one kilogram over a thousand grams, and that's gonna give us 0 0.420 kilograms. So our total mass is 0 0.420 kilograms. Um, we're going to find the unbalanced force. And the unbalanced force is found by Newton's second law. 
F equals M3G. So F is going to be equal to the mass of the rider, which is 0 0.020 kilograms. And we're going to multiply that by G. And as you know from the lecture class, G is equal to um, acceleration due to gravity, which has a value of 9.80 meters per second squared. And when we multiply that, we will get an unbalanced force of zero, sorry. So let's do the calculation to the side over here. So we say the unbalanced force F is equal to M3G. And M3 has a mass of 0 0.020 kilograms. And G is acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.80 meters per second squared. So when we put that number in the calculator, we have 0 0.020 times 9.80, and that will give us 0 0.196 newtons. So the unbalanced force is 0 0.196 newtons. All right, so now we're ready to begin the experiment. So we are going to put, we're going to first put the, the rider on the left, which is this, we're putting the rider on the left. And we're going to note the time it takes for the rider to reach the ground. Now we're ready to begin the experiment. We will put the rider on the left uh, mass and we will note the time that the rider takes to reach the ground. Three point eighty seven. Another one. Three point twenty six. Now we have to put the rider on the right. Now we're going to put the rider on the right, on the right. And we will do the same thing. We're going to time how long it takes to reach the ground. We have two more trials on the right, so we're going to time how long it takes um, to reach the, the ground. Three point thirty some seven thirty seven. Three point twenty eight. All right.
right, so um, we're going to continue with this experiment where we're keeping the unbalanced force constant, but we're changing the mass. So in trial two, we'll be using 500 gram um, masses. And so here we've put M1 equals M2 equals 500 grams. And the total um, mass is going to be 500 grams plus 500 grams plus 20 um, grams. So here we've done the conversion. 1,020 grams will give us 1.020 kilogram. Now I need to calculate the force. Now I need to calculate the unbalanced force. The unbalanced force is going to be the same in both cases because we're using a 20 gram rider. So 20 gram rider is 0 0.020 kilograms and we will multiply that by um, acceleration due to gravity. And so we will get the same value of 0 0.196 newtons. All right, so now we're ready to start the experiment. So first I'm going to put the unbalanced force on the left and we will time, we will time how long it takes for this mass to reach the ground. Four point fifty eight. All right, so we have two more trials on that side, on the left side. Four point sixty two. Over. 4.45. All right, so now we're going to do three trials on the right. Four point sixty Four point fifty nine. Okay, the last trial here. One, two, three. Four point fifty eight. So now we're done with procedure one. I'm going to go to data table 6.2 and I'm going to do um, the example for trial one and you will follow what I did for trial one and you will fill out the data for trial two on your own. So I'll just be doing trial one for you and then you will fill out the, the, the data table for trial two on your own using the data that we've collected. So here for the acceleration from our measurement of distance and time, um, we're going to use the equation that acceleration 
So let's so this is the acceleration acceleration from measurement of distance and time. In order to find that acceleration, we'll use the equation that acceleration is equal to two times the distance over t squared, which is the time. So we're going to calculate that acceleration based upon our data. So the distance that collected our data, we're ready to fill out um, data table 6.2. So first we're going to measure the acceleration from the measurements of distance and time that we just took in table 6.1. So to find the acceleration from measurement of distance and time, we're going to use the equation acceleration equals two times distance over time squared. So the distance that we use in this experiment was 1.32 meters. So we're gonna say two times 1.32 meters over time that it took. So here we need to find the average time so the average time here is the sum of these measurements. So we have the sum of six measurements divided by six. So it's 3.31 plus 3.37 plus 3.26 plus 3.45 plus 3.37 plus 3.28. And then we're dividing that by six and this is 3.34. So the average time it took for the first trial was 3.34. So we're going to divide this by 3.34 squared. All right, so now let's calculate that. So we have two times 1.32 and then we're going to divide that by 3.34 squared and we will get 0 0.237 meters per second squared. So the for trial one the acceleration for more measurements is 0. 237 meters per second squared. Now from the acceleration from Newton's second law. And that equation is given as F equals MA. And if we rearrange it in terms of A, we have A equals F over the total mass M. Now, the total mass M that we use in the experiment was 0 0.420 kilograms. So that's 0 0.420 kilograms. And then we're going to divide, sorry, the force in, from the experiment, sorry, was 0 0.196 Newton, 0 0.196 Newton. Now you need to remember that one Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. So in order for you to follow the units, instead of using one Newton, I'm going to use one kilogram meters per second squared. So here I have kilogram meter per second squared. And then I'm going to divide by the total mass that was used for trial one, which is 0 0.420 kilogram. So 0 0.420 kilogram. Now when we do this calculation, we have 0 0.196 divided by 0 0.420.
and our answer is 0 0.467 meters per second squared. So we will put 0 0.467 meters per second squared. Now we have one last piece of calculation to do. We need to calculate the percent difference. Now we use percent difference. It's, it's, it's a way that we analyze our error. And we use percent difference when we don't have an accepted or standard value. So here I'll be calculating the percent difference. So percent difference equals your largest data volume. So we're going to come over here and we're going to find our largest data volume. And our largest data value here is 3.45. Sorry. Um, so percent difference is when we do not have an accepted or standard value. So of the two um, accelerations that we did, the largest value is 0 0.467. And then we are going to subtract our 0 0.237. And remember the units here are meet. Alright, so here I'm going to calculate percent difference. Percent difference is your largest data um, value minus the smallest. So I'm here I'm going to say 0 0.467 meters per second squared minus 0 0.3. 0 0.237 meters per second squared and then I'm going to find the average of these two values 0 0.237 plus 0 0.467 and then I'm going to divide by 2 and so 0 0.237 plus 0 0.467 and I'm dividing by 2 and that will give me 0 0.352. So percent difference is the largest data value minus the smallest divided by the average. Alright, so now let's figure out what is the percent difference and of course since it's percent difference we have to multiply by 100. So we have 0 0.467, sorry, 0 0.467 minus 0 0.237 and then we're going to divide by 0 0.352 so here we have a large um, percent difference it's going to be 65 percent so the percent difference is 65 percent all right so now we are finished with procedure one. It's time to go to procedure two. Now, in procedure two, we will be keeping the mass of the, we're gonna keep the masses constant. And I'll be using the 200 gram weight in procedure two, but we are going to vary the rider. So, now we're going to move on to procedure two. In procedure two, we are keeping the masses constant while we're changing the unbalanced force. So we'll be using the 200 gram weight in procedure two. 
and we will be changing the mass of the rider. Now we already have one of our data set because we did do 200 gram weight before. And we, the rider that we use in that instance was 20 um, grams. So we don't have to repeat that data set. But what we'll have to do, I'm going to make the rider 24 grams um, for the second trial. And that's the trial that we will need to do. So um, let us do some um, calculations before we get started. Can you come and help me with something? The distance the masses are going to travel is the same as before, 1.32 meter. And the unbalanced force for the first trial will be the same as before. It's going to be 0 0.196. But for the second trial, the unbalanced force is going to be different because now the unbalanced force will be 0 0.0224 kilograms times acceleration due to gravity. So we will have to calculate this new value. So 0 0.024 times 0 0.024 times 9.80. And that will give us 0 0.235 kilograms. All right, let me double check that point zero two four. Sorry, point zero point zero two four times nine point eight zero. All right, so zero point two three five. So now the unbalanced force is zero point two three five newtons. So newtons, one kilogram meters per second squared is known as a newton. Now the total mass that is going to be used here is going to be 0 0.424 um, kilograms. Sorry. So the total mass that is used in trial one is the same as 0, uh, 0 0.420 kilograms. And here is going to be 0 0.424. Now we already know the values for trial one and I'm just gonna write them back here. 3.31, and 3.37. The next thing we are going to do, we're going to take the average, we already took the average and that was 3.34. Now we're going to do the second trial, but this time we're going to change the, um, the rider, the mass of the rider. Instead of 20, we are going to use 24. So instead of 20, we'll be using 24. Each of these small ones are two um, grams. So two of these will give us, two of these plus the 20 will give us 24. So we're gonna start with the left side of the, we're gonna start with the left side. And we, the experiment is still the same. We're going to take see how long it takes for the um, for this left mass to reach the ground. Two point two four four. Two point four four. Two point four four. All right. So we're gonna try the first trial again. 
One, two, three. One, two, three. 2.75. So now guys, we're switching side to the right and we're going to just do the same thing that we've been doing. We're gonna time how long it takes to hit the ground. One, two, three. Two seconds and sixty five. Two point two point sixty five. Two seconds and forty three two point forty four five seconds. <laughs> Five nine seconds. All right, let's take the averages of these numbers. So here we have two point nine one. Plus two point five. Seven plus two point seven five plus two point six five plus 2.45 plus 2.59 then we're going to divide by 6 and we have an average of 2.65 all right so i've already done a calculation over um in procedure one for you and i'm going to fill out that um that um that they, um the first trial so the first trial was exactly like what we had in procedure one here the acceleration from the measurement was 0.237. The acceleration from Newton's second law was 0 0.467. And the percent difference was 63%. All right, so now you're going to calculate the values for trial two again. All right, so I thank you for watching this video and I will see you guys in class next time.